Act one, waving and smiling. They give you a flag and a picture. You have to wave the flag continually. Hold the picture like you're holding a baby. And go to the sit-in just after you listen to the speech. No need to analyze it or understand it. They know that you won't. Go to the sit-in, wave the flag, smile to the camera, and give them an interview about how happy and satisfied you are about the changes. Don't worry, they won't ask you about them. It's not part of the script. My name is Salma Marouf, and this is the political theater I live through every day. I am a political activist, a member of February 20 movement, and the demands of the movement vary between, uh, between uh, parliamentary monarchy, uh, a king that governs, that reigns but doesn't govern, and stopping political domination and nepotism. And this is my story. Um, I was chased by, uh, actually I was locked in a house after being chased by regime royalists. They were pelting eggs at me, harassing me, and dissing me. I managed with the help of some locals to uh, hide in a house. Uh, they held a sitting in front of the house and they said that they won't leave the sitting until I say, long live the king, hold his picture, wave the flag and state that I am a Muslim. I was mainly attacked because I am part of this political movement fighting for freedom, justice and dignity. And that day we were organizing a protest to boycott the constitution because uh, the committee drafted the constitution wasn't elected and also the changes were cosmetic. As I sat in that house and their voices grew louder and their threats more violent, the room suddenly became darker and my revolutionary dreams were decoloring and fading away. They have just stepped on them. Ironically, those regime royalists are the ones suffering from poverty with low wages, whose children are either unemployed or studying in bad conditions. They have no health insurance. And they are the ones who are going to vote with a yes on a constitution that didn't give any power to the parliament or the government. Unfortunately, for those people, patriotism consists only of blind and irrational obedience for governments and leaders. Their loyalty towards them is part of their patriotic duties. Patriotism is being reduced to only a flag waving without any deep understanding of the real values behind it, fighting for freedom, justice, and dignity. Also, fear is one of the most effective methods of social control, making people believe that their lives may be under an imminent threat will keep them in order and docile. In Morocco, anyone who challenges the authorities can be tortured and imprisoned. So because of this mis misunderstanding of what patriotism is, civic education is important to promote civic engagement and make people, um, uh, teach people their civic rights and responsibilities as well as the skills to evaluate, analyze, defend positions on public and participate. Um, in addition to my involvement in the movement, I'm working on um, an association that advocates for human rights, civic and political education. Patriotism is one way of manipulating people. The other way is through media. And Morocco controls the media and uses it to manipulate the people. Defining the norms, molding the minds, forming the tastes, excluding the undesirable and setting the political agenda. Moroccan mass media mastered the art of propaganda and avoidance, suppressing important stories and ignoring pressing issues. 
After announcing the pro-democracy marches on February 20 of last year, all propaganda techniques were used against the youth activists, representing them as troublemakers and mobilizing people uh, for empty concepts like the Moroccan exception. News media tend to accord so much importance to surface events and so little attention to the issues at stake. For example, during the referendum campaign, the, the dialogue was only about, or the, the discussions, and it was reduced only to one question, will the yes vote win or the boycott? The dialogue that is supposed to accompany the votes or the referendum was absent. They're always giving us the safe picture, uh, fitting the boundaries that they have set without linking it to the causes. Reshaping the media, making them more accessible, fair, and representative is primordial. Web TV will be, uh, or will encourage citizens to participate and to uh, collect and report stories and analyze them. And it will be also a space for them to articulate their concerns and give different sides of the stories. Act three, complete darkness, deafening silence. The truth was there, the truth was bitter. When you can't escape a corrupt and unjust system, you adapt to it. You resist change and you justify the status quo. Opposing the system was provoking guilt for most of Moroccans because it was part of them. It replaced their autonomy by laziness and conformism and has hindered the capacities of making rational decisions. One has to marvel how the system has cloned itself not only in people's mind but in every single institution, hospital, school, administration. It's like small microchips implanted everywhere. The fight is not against the system. The fight is with the people, how to change their mentalities. And I think that political education will get people involved in politics and will make them feel responsible and capable of analyzing any given situation. Also, it will help them gain knowledge about how institutions function and about the decision-making process. My association is going to be firstly independent, non-partisan, and striving to be educational, and also teach people about love, deep, authentic love for one's country, a love that give, gave us the power to resist repression and give flowers for policemen even after they have beaten us, a love that made our parents and fellow activists in the movement endure prison just because they want more freedom and dignity. And the love that is pushing us not to retreat or surrender, but to continue fighting to build a better Morocco. Thank you.